from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Pat McCracken, Johnny, Universal Adjustment Bureau. Hi, Pat. What's on your mind? Ever heard of A, B, and C? Well, yeah, back in the first grade. Oh, oh, look, I'm not talking about the alphabet. I'm talking about an advertising agency. Oh, well, what about it? Well, the A stands for Appleton, Alfred Appleton, 55 years old, and Eastern Trust has his life insured for $100,000. So? It's annuity. It starts paying off at the age of 65, and we'd like to see him collect it. Looks like somebody else has different ideas. What do you mean? He thinks somebody's trying to kill him. Oh, I see. You want me to run down to New York and talk to him? Well, he's up at his weekend place now, about 100 miles up the coast, overlooking the sea at uh, Skeleton Point. You can talk to him there. Skeleton Point? Now, that's a cheerful name. I know. Johnny, mm. make sure it stays just a name. <laughs> in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Eastern Trust and Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the 11 o'clock matter. Expense account item one, $8.40 gas and mileage on my car to Skeleton Point through a drenching rainstorm. The Appleton home, perched high on a cliff at the edge of the sea, was an old weather-beaten affair. But right now, it looked mighty good to me. Yes? Is this Mr. Appleton's house? This is the Gregory house. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Appleton only leases this house. I see. Well, is he at home? I believe he's expecting me. You're Mr. Dollar? Yes. I'm Mrs. Gregory, the housekeeper. Come in. Mrs. Gregory had a strong, determined face and dark, metallic, piercing eyes. She took my coat and pointed to a door across the entry hall. I was conscious of her eyes following me as I entered the library to find two men seated in front of an open fire. Johnny Dollar? Yes, sir. I'm uh, Al F. Appleton. This is my attorney, Grant Hillman. Well, how are you, Mr. Dollar? Well, uh, a little damp, Mr. Hillman. Oh, yeah, here. Sit down to the fire. Dry out. Oh, thanks. Ooh, feels good. And slightly warmer than the welcome the housekeeper gave you, I imagine. Mrs. Gregory? Well, uh, she did seem a little reserved. Mm, she's a widow. Owns this house. But I love the place, so... Um, anyway, I'm glad you came. I understand there's been some sort of attempt on your life, Mr. Appleton. Well... Uh, Mr. Appleton has received several, well, crank notes lately. We thought it wise to take what precautions we could. Have you notified the police, Mr. Hillman? No, no, I vetoed the idea, Johnny. Oh, why, Mr. Appleton? I didn't want that kind of publicity right now. My advertising agency's right in the middle of landing a fat new account. Your agency is A, B, and C. That's right. Who are B and C? A C is nobody. Hmm? Tom Baker and I liked the idea of ABC, but we didn't have any other partners, so C just stands for company. Well, this Tom Baker is your only partner, then? He was. There's some question as to whether he still is. I don't follow you. Uh, Al, I don't think there's any need to go into that now. Well, I guess you're right, Grant. Anyway, I don't want to accuse Tom of anything until I've got a chance to go over the books this weekend. Al, did I hear someone at the door a moment? Uh, this is Johnny Dollar, Laura. Mr. Dollar, my wife. Oh, I see. Um, how do you do, Mr. Dollar? Mrs. Appleton? Uh, Dollar, the crank letters Al has been getting are up in my room. I'll bring them down. Okay, Mr. Hellman. You'll uh, stay overnight with us, won't you, Johnny? Now, haven't you imposed on Mr. Dollar enough, dear? Perhaps he has business back in the city. Nonsense. And with that storm out there, oh, I'll have Mrs. Gregory make a room for him. Well, uh, would you like a drink, Mr. Dollar? No, uh, no thanks. Mrs. Appleton, you seemed rather surprised when you saw me here. Oh, did I? Almost as though you were expecting someone else. Someone else? Why, no, I, I wasn't expecting anyone in particular. 
Well, perhaps I just... Wait, hold it. What's the matter? That flash of lightning. There's someone outside that window. Oh, no. You, you must be wrong. Stay right here. I grabbed my coat and went out into the storm. Because of the prowler, sure. But also because of Laura Appleton. Because she'd been staring at that same window, shaking her head quickly as though warning someone. But outside in the downpour in the mud, I could see no one, no footprints. Finally, I went back inside to the phone in the entry hall to call the local police. But the phone was dead. Maybe the storm had knocked down the lines. Yeah. Or maybe someone just wanted to make sure we'd have a nice, cozy weekend, undisturbed. And my hunch was, it might be too cozy for comfort. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now for another episode in the life of Sergeant Donald Bellwether, my husband. your eyes, honey, and take another nap. We'll be home soon. Okay. Will you stay awake now? Yeah, I will. Oh, I still think we should have stopped in the hotel. And the 11 o'clock matter. Did you uh, see anybody outside, Mr. Dollar? In that rain, Mr. Hillman, I couldn't see 10 feet in front of me. Well, can you describe the face you saw at the window? Well, it was more of a silhouette. I couldn't even tell if it was a man or a woman. You sure you did see someone, Johnny? Yes, reasonably sure, Mr. Appleton. Uh, come in. Your partner is here, Mr. Appleton. Tom Baker? Hello, Al. I thought I'd surprise you. I tried to call you earlier, but your phone was out. Well, uh, this is a surprise. Well, I'd like you to meet Johnny Dollar. Dollar? Hi. Tom, you're soaking wet. My car hit a big puddle about half a mile down the road and quit on me. I had to walk the rest of the way. Did you just now get here, Mr. Baker? Well, yes. Why? Now, Mr. Dollar thought he saw someone outside the window a few minutes ago. Oh, no, I just now got here. Well, I've got some extra clothes up in my room that should fit you, Tom. Let's get you changed before you catch cold. Thank you, Elman. Oh, well, look, this rain is getting all of us down. Why, why, why don't we live a little? Huh? Well, how about going down to the beach house, building a fire, playing some records, having some drinks, huh? Uh, yeah, that uh, might be a good idea. Where's the beach house? Uh, down near the bottom of the cliff with the beach. Uh, it's real nice. But uh, in this weather? Oh, there's a stairway leading down. Yes, why don't we go down there? I'm, I'm getting the creeps just sitting around here like this. So we went down to the beach house. The rain had let up a little, but nobody seemed to feel much like a party. We just sat there in front of the fire, not saying much. Once or twice, I thought I detected Laura Appleton and Tom Baker exchanging quick glances. But I couldn't be sure. 
That's the intercom from the house, Al. Oh, yeah. I'll get it. Yes? Oh, yes, Mr. Gregory. You can go on to bed. We won't be needing you anymore tonight. You know, bed sounds like a good idea. Oh, it's almost 11 and I'm beat. So, if you'll excuse me. Oh, sure, sure. Well, why don't we all... Al, could we have our talk now? Oh, okay, Tom, if you insist. Laura, why don't you fix us another drink? All right, Al. How about you, Mr. Dollar? Uh, yeah, I'm with you, Hellman. Let's go on up to the house. Let up. Yeah. Mr. Hillman, I didn't come with you because I was tired. I wanted to talk to you. I thought as much. Earlier this evening, Appleton said something about not wanting to accuse Baker of anything until he'd gone over the books this weekend. What does he mean? Well, I'm not really sure, Mr. Dolan. All I know is that Al seems to think he may have found some irregularities in the books of his advertising agency. Oh? Well, if there is anything wrong, I blame myself partially. How so? Well, I manage most of Al's affairs, but the agency has been running so smoothly, at least so I thought, that, well... I see. That, that's going to change, as of right now. I didn't come up to go to bed either. I'm going to work on those books. Ought to take me about an hour. Uh, just about 11 now. Will you be up by midnight? Yeah. I'd like to know what you find out. Oh, uh, where is that light switch? I never could remember. Dollar. What is it? There's somebody else in here. Look out. What? Oh! Dollar. Dollar. I guess I was out only a few seconds because the clock was still striking when Hillman brought me to. Dollar. Are you all right? Uh, what? What? Yeah, I, I, I guess so. I grabbed at him, whoever he was, but he knocked me loose. By the time I got the lights on, he was gone. Oh. Lucky for you, he only stunned you momentarily. Oh, brother. <sighs> Hillman, did you see where he went? Well, he didn't leave by this front door here, I'm sure of that. Then he must be still in the house. We worked our way through the house room by room. Finally, ten minutes later, we stood by an open window in a back room. Here's our answer. He went out this window. Yeah. What is it? What's the matter? What? Oh, Mrs. Gregory. Yeah, Mr. Dollar was attacked by a prowler. A prowler? What? That's terrible. Where's the intercom to the beach house? We'd better tell Mr. Apple. Uh, right there on the wall. Oh. This button here? Yes. No answer. Come on, Hillman. Let's get down there. Pounded out of the house and along the path to the edge of the cliff. <laughs> then we found her, Laura, standing at the top of the wooden stairway. One section of the railing was broken away. We looked over the cliff. There was a body lying on the rocks down below. It was Al Appleton. <laughs> of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Do you know who said, democracy is based upon the conviction that there are extraordinary possibilities in ordinary people? Those words came from the American religious leader, Harry Emerson Fosdick. From the earliest days of the United States of America, there has been the sentiment that the average person can achieve an important goal if he is given an environment in which he can develop his capabilities to the fullest extent an environment in which the individual is given the rights and privileges that he needs for development. It is the duty of every American to protect and stimulate this environment. Remember the words of Harry Emerson Fosdick. They are part of your American heritage. The extraordinary possibilities of ordinary people are inherent in American democracy. And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the 11 o'clock matter. We stood on the stairway at the top of the cliff looking down at Appleton's body on the rocks below. That is, Hillman and I did. Laura Appleton was in a state of shock, and we couldn't get much sense out of her. 
We had Mrs. Gregory take her back to the house. Then Helen and I got a flashlight and climbed down the rocks to Appleton's body. Dead, Mr. Dollar. We better not move that body until the police get here. Yeah. Let's see. His wristwatch stopped at 10 after 11. It's 11.30 now. Right. And because the clock was just striking 11 when I got hit over the head in the entry hall... Yeah, so then we must have spent 10 or 15 minutes searching the house for that prowler. Meantime, he or somebody else was shoving Appleton over the cliff. Somebody else? There were a couple of people with Appleton down at the beach house. Laura and... and Tom Baker. I'd forgotten about Tom. Where is he? Right now, Hellman, that's a very good question. We went back to the house. The phone was working now, so I put in a call to the local sheriff's office. But all the units were out on call. They'd send somebody as soon as they could. I started for Laura Appleton's room. Grant Hillman overtook me in the hall. Dollar, I made a preliminary check of the agency records Appleton brought up here with him this weekend. Did you find a shortage? Yes. Possibly as much as $50,000. I see. Thanks, Hillman. Yeah, I'll see you later. Come in. Oh... Mr. Dollar, I, uh, I'm feeling better now. I'm sorry to bother you with questions, Mrs. Appleton, but I'm afraid I have no choice. Yes, I understand. I want you to tell me exactly what happened. Well, I, I'll try. After you and Grant Hillman left the beach house, my husband and Tom Baker and I sat there a few minutes, and then Tom left. I see. Then, a couple of minutes later, somebody from the house called my husband on the intercom, so he left me. What time was that? Oh, uh... A few minutes after 11, I guess. Uh-huh. What happened then? I, uh, I sat there a few minutes longer. Then I... Well, I, I just didn't feel like sitting there alone, so I started up the stairway. When I got to the top, I... I saw that the rail had been broken away. I... I looked over the edge. Okay. Mrs. Appleton, why did Tom Baker come here this evening? Why, I, I don't know. I think you do. What? You tried to warn him when I saw his face at the window earlier. His face? And the two of you kept exchanging glances all evening. I know you're wrong. Listen, Grant Hillman's in a position to know something about your husband's business affairs, isn't he? Well, of course. Why? Your husband suspected a shortage. Hillman confirmed it a few minutes ago after going over the records. Oh, but surely you don't think that Tom Baker Baker had... was your husband's partner. Maybe he came up here to try to square things with him. Was that it? No. Oh, all right. Tom did come up here to talk to my husband. What about? I was going to ask for a divorce. To marry Tom Baker? Oh, I... I know it sounds sordid now after what's happened, but it wasn't that way at all. Tom and I wanted everything in the open. We wanted to tell Al. But I... Well, I didn't realize that you and Grant were going to be here this weekend. That's why I tried to signal Tom not to come in. Go on. Down at the beach house, he wanted to talk to Al, but... Well, I guess he couldn't bring himself to it. That's why he went for a walk. And you haven't seen him since? No. Oh, Mr. Dollar, I, I know my story doesn't sound very convincing, but but if you're trying to suggest that either Tom or I killed my husband... Yeah? Uh, Dollar, could I see you a minute? Oh, sure. I'll talk with you later, Mrs. Appleton. What is it, Hellman? Tom Baker just walked in. Baker? Yes, I thought you'd want to talk to him. I sure do. Look... Mrs. Appleton claims somebody called her husband at the beach house on the intercom a few minutes after 11. If so, that's what lured him up to the top of the stairway. A few minutes after 11? Well, that's when you and I were searching the house. We ended up at the intercom last, though. Somebody could have had time to make that call. Oh, now, wait a minute. Mrs. Gregory was near that room when we got to it. Yeah, I know. Why don't you question her, Hillman, while I see what I can get out of Baker? <laughs> Dollar, I didn't have anything to do with it. I went for a walk on the beach. I didn't even know Appleton was dead until Grant Hillman told me a few minutes ago. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah, well, I'm afraid we'll have to let the police decide that, Baker. Sheriff Station, Maloney. Hello, Johnny Dollar at the Appleton place. I'm still waiting for one of your units. Oh, yeah, I was sorry, Mr. Dollar. We've had a lot of calls on account of the storm. Well, you're not the man I talked to when I called before. No, no, that was Harris. He went off duty at one. He left me a message about your call, and we'll have somebody up there within 15 minutes. <sighs> okay, thanks. That's funny. Well, uh, Mrs. Gregory denies making that call on the intercom, Dollar. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, okay, Ellen. Well, what's the matter? 
uh, something that sergeant said over the phone. Hey, wait a minute. What time have you got? Why, ten minutes of one. Yeah? That's what my watch says, too. But according to the sergeant, it was after one. I checked the big clock in the entry hall and the one in the living room. They both agreed with my watch, ten minutes of one. I slipped outside, unlocked my car door, and looked at the clock on the dashboard. It read ten after one. When I felt a gun in my back, I realized I'd come up with the answer a little too late. It's a pity, Dollar. I thought I had a foolproof idea. But I hadn't figured on your locking the car. So it was you who hit me over the head when the clock was striking 11. Who called Appleton at the beach house, lured him up the stairway, and shoved him over. Then came back and reset my watch and the clock so I'd hear it still chiming 11 when you brought me to. I thought I'd only been out a few seconds. Actually, it was 15 minutes. Yes, but you're the only one who knows. Now get in the car. We're leaving. I started to get in, then kicked at the car door behind me. It swung and knocked Hillman off balance. Before he could recover, I nailed him. Oh! By the time he came to, the sheriff's patrol had arrived. And Hillman, you know, he wasn't one bit happy to see them. Expense account item two, $13 even. Transportation back home. Total expenses, $21.40. And a real bargain, if I do say so myself. Remarks? Hillman's motive was money, of course. It was he who'd taken the 50000 from Appleton's agency. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Bailey originates in Hollywood and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Today's story was written by Robert Wright. Heard in our cast were Eleanor Audley, Paula Winslow, Larry Dobkin, Will Wright, Ben Wright, and Harry Bartell. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverley speaking. to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.